This is Sal here, and I'm here with Ben Eater, who I consider to be an expert at many things. What are we going to talk Enthusiast, about today? Maybe. Enthusiast, maybe. <laughs> Enthusiast. Anyway, let's talk about uh, semiconductors. And semiconductors, this is, you know, the, uh, the computing revolution and electronics, the phones in our pockets, that they all are made of chips that have semiconductors in them. Right, right. And they're made from silicon. Silicon. And so that's why we have this, this periodic table here. We see silicon right over here with an atomic number of 14, which means it has 14 protons. And a neutral silicon would also have 14 electrons. Right. Right, but what we care about is the electrons that are in the outermost shell, the valence, the valence electrons. Right. So silicon, and, and you know, for any viewers who are unfamiliar, we have a whole series of videos on valence electrons. I encourage them to watch this if 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 what Ben and I are talking about right now seems a little confusing. But silicon has a neutral silicon atom will have fourteen electrons, but the four in the outermost shell are the ones that are likely to react. And so when chemists depict silicon, or when they think about how it might react, they think primarily about these four electrons. But just because we drew these four, these are the four valence electrons, there's another 10 for a neutral, a neutral silicon atom that would be sitting closer to the nucleus. Right, but those don't react with, with other atoms as right. much, so we don't, we don't really think about those. Um, but so in, in a semiconductor, you've got basically a whole crystal uh, okay. of, of silicon atoms. So let's, let's see if we can imagine that. Yeah. So let's, let's so we have a crystal here. So if each of these circles are a silicon atom, mm -hmm. and if we imagine, and we're we're only going to think about the valence electrons. So the one this silicon atom, it has four valence electrons. So it could be one, two, three, and four valence electrons, and so it could be bonded to a neighboring silicon. Let me do this in a different color so we can keep track of its valence electrons, to a neighboring silicon whose valence electrons are one, two, three, and four. And when we see what happened here is that they, they formed a, a covalent bond, which allows both of these silicons to share both of these electrons. Yeah, so you've sort of drawn them in different colors, but really both of those, both of those feel like they kind of own the, the, both of them. Right, sort of shared. and in chemistry, and once again, you know, we cover this a lot in the, in, in, in the chemistry section of Khan Academy, is you, you, atoms get stable when they when they can pretend or they feel like they have eight valence electrons. Right. And so if a silicon does this with four other silicons, it can pretend like it has eight valence electrons. Like this one right over here, it kind of feels like it partially owns two, four, six, eight electrons, even though it only contributed four. The other four come from the neighboring silicon. Yeah, and all of the silicon atoms in this in this crystal structure are, feel that way. So this is a very stable. Uh, right, right, stable right. Thing. And and once again, what we're seeing is just a slice, a two-dimensional slice. This thing would be three-dimensional. Yeah, it's a two-dimensional depiction, really, because the bonds are, you know, three dimensions as right, well. Right, but, right. But yeah, this is a representation. Um, right. So what we're interested in is is we're talking about computers and and electronics, and and so we want to we want to talk about current flow. Yep. Um, and so I guess the question is is can current flow through this? Is this a conductor? Well, the way, I mean, what, what we've just talked about, it looks like everything would be stable here. There doesn't seem a lot of a strong incentive for, you know, even if you were to put a current across this, and let, let's do that, even if you were to put a current, so if I were to put a current across this, so this is a battery right over here, so this is a battery right over here, and this is the negative side, the negative terminal, this is the positive terminal. And we typically talk about current going from positive to negative, but we know that it's actually the electrons are flowing. This is a... Yeah, those... it's a little confusing, unfortunately. I guess Benjamin Franklin uh, had a 50% chance of getting this right, and he got it wrong. And he got it wrong. Well, yeah. he did many other good things. And yeah, we'll, so we'll excuse him this we'll, one. But... We'll give him a pass. But the electrons... <laughs> The electrons want to, you know, if you have a complete circuit, if the electrons can go all the way around, they would go to the positive terminal. Right. But all of these electrons in this silicon lattice, it looks like they're pretty happy. There's no reason for them to move. Good conductors, you know, when we think about the transition metals, things like copper, they have a right. sea of electrons. In these Lots of free electrons free that can move around. And these, these metallic bonds. In fact, this, you know, we, this, this wire that we have right over here, if it was made out of, say, copper, it would have just a lot of free electrons, right. the sea of electrons that could, that could flow. But here, it looks like the electrons are pretty happy where they are. They don't, they don't really have a, a lot of incentive to move around. Right. So how is this useful when we're building something? It doesn't a, seem a so computer useful. or something. Yes. Yeah. So it, it, by itself, it's not. Um, mm -hmm. So what we do is we, we, um, we add some impurities to I the see. silicon. Um, and we, we call this process doping. I see. Uh, we're, we're just adding some impurity to the silicon that... that um, lets us conduct electricity and let's do some interesting things. And can they be like any impurity? 
No, so they're actually very specific impurities. And so okay. one one common impurity is phosphorus. I see. So let's look at the periodic table. I always like to, anytime I hear the name of an element, I need to refer to the periodic good, table good to, thing get, to, do, to get yeah. my bearings. All right, yes. so phosphorus, look, it's right next to silicon on the periodic table. It is. It has an atomic number of 15. And so it's it's a neutral phosphorus would have 15 protons in, in this nucleus and 15 electrons. But if we think about its valence electrons, it would have one more valence electrons. Right. So it has five, it would have five valence electrons. Yeah, and that fifth valence electron is like super important. Okay, so let's let's think about what's going on here. So if I were to so listen if I were to replace this silicon with a let me pick a good color to do this with blue. Yeah. If I were to if I were to replace this silicon with a phosphorus, it would have it could have one, two, three, four but then it has a fifth valence electron that wouldn't be able to form a covalent bond. Right. So it's right. just kind of sitting there. It's sort of sitting there. Right. And let me do that again over maybe maybe this this one right here is a phosphorus. And so this is one, two, three, four, and then it has a fifth valence electron. So it has these extra electrons. Yeah, so you have extra electrons. And they're they're free to move around. They're not stuck in these covalent bonds. Right, those um, covalent bonds is kind of a stable configuration. You have the, you know, the eight valence electrons, but here you have these extra ones. And so, yeah, they're, they're more liberated, I guess. To, to right, right. And, 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 and so if we go to, we have this battery hooked up here, you have this positive terminal yep. down here. Yep. You have this positive terminal, and electrons are going to be attracted to that. Yeah, so this one, this one right over here, eventually, you know, especially, it, it might be able to be, you know, it could be attracted to that one, that one could move there, that one could move, and eventually get to the wire. Yeah. Right? Like this guy could replace that guy, could replace that guy, and eventually the electrons could start could start flowing. Yeah. Could start, let me that's Or, that. I mean, <laughs> the way we're looking at this is a width of two atoms. It could it, it could kind of make that leap. Right, right. Oh, it could even make the leap. It could just go straight to, yeah. Yeah, but. To, yeah. So, so this stuff could start could start flowing, and if this if this extra if this extra phosphorus electron were to move, start moving to the right, then this is going to be then this phosphorus is going to have a positive Slightly charge, positive, yeah. and so maybe it grabs an electron from here, and then yep. that grabs an electron from the wire, and so you start to have current flowing. Yeah, yeah, we got current flowing. Fascinating. Interesting. So there's that's one way okay. of, of doping silicon to okay. get to get current to flow through it. There's another way. All right. Um, and that is with something like boron. All right, let's get another lattice here. All right, so let me get go back to the periodic table. You just said boron. I did. So boron has an atomic number. Let me let me get do, go back to, let me pick a good, let me do purple for boron. Good boron color. Yeah, good boron color. So boron has an atomic number of five, but once again, if we care about its valence electrons, it has three electrons in its outermost shell. So boron's valence might look like that, depending right. on the convention you use. So let's dope this this silicon lattice with a little bit of boron. Let's do it, yeah. So the ones that are other, not labeled, we'll just assume are silicon, but I'll throw a couple of borons in here. So if this is a boron, the boron would have, so it's one, two, three valence electrons. So let me get rid of this one, because that would have, would have only been there if this was silicon. Right. So let me, get, let me change the color. Actually, let me, so let me, actually, let me get rid of this one. Oh, whoops, that's not the right color. This right over here. So. Because boron only has three valence electrons, it's not able to form this fourth covalent bond here. And let me do a couple more borons like that. So maybe this is a boron right over here, and it has one, two, three valence electrons, and so this it wasn't able to form this fourth covalent bond. And so it almost feels like there's a hole here or a yeah. gap. And that's actually exactly what it's called is, is that's a hole. what it's called. I should go into naming things. <laughs> <laughs> Very creative so, engineers. So, these, so, yeah, so these are called holes. Those are called holes. Yeah. Um, there are places where an electron would want to be in a normal silicon uh, crystal, but, mm -hmm. but there isn't one there because we've introduced this boron impurity. I see. I think I see where this is going because, you know, just as having these extra valence electrons introduced kind of a imbalance and allowed electrons to flow. Made it a little bit less stable. Uh, yep. This is also kind of an imbalance. A little bit less stable, yeah. A little less stable. So let's hook a battery up to it. Let's get see put, what happens. Yeah, let's put a battery on this. So let's put a battery on this. And we get, so this is the positive, this is the negative. So let's see, if this is this is the positive, so electrons want to go here. Electrons are going to be attracted to the positive terminal, yeah. Ele but, okay. But, but in this case, we maybe don't have uh, a lot of free electrons. Mm -hmm. We actually have more holes than, than we have electrons. We have more holes than electrons. So what could happen is, is the electrons that are coming from the negative terminal 
they could they could you know they could make their way or you know yeah. kind of a, a chain uh, a kind of electrons start forming but eventually these electrons can we'll this electron holes. can fill this yeah it's a nearby hole, hole a nearby hole and then maybe you know the the whole kind of will will transition to the you know one way to think about it is if if this electron here fills this hole then you have a hole here yeah, just like the electrons could kind of wander around when we had the phosphorus over on the left, right. um, the holes are kind of free to wander around a bit. Right. Those uh, those kind of give a place where the electrons can jump to. Exactly. Yeah. So electrons coming out of that negative terminal of the battery are going to find a nearby hole. Hole. Um, and when they do that, then the boron, you know, where where that hole is filled is going to be a little bit more positively charged. So another electron, or a little more negative, or a little more negatively charged. Right. 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 Ne negatively charged. Yeah. So then a hole is going to want to free up, so that electron is going to is going to move. Right. I see. So what will eventually happen, I mean, just what we depicted, this electron could go there, then there'd be a hole here, and then you know, maybe that electron could eventually get to the wire over here, and then the electrons will move to the right. The electrons will move to the right across the wire and form a, a current, right. while the holes kind of move... The holes will move to the left. To the left. Yeah. Right? And you can almost view the holes as kind of a positive thing, even though it's a non-thing. Yeah, we, we actually, yeah, we, we do like to think of the holes as moving, um, even though, yeah, it is kind of a, it's a an gap. absence of something. It's, a, it's an absence of something moving. Um, but, but yeah, we think of the holes as moving. And so in both of these cases, one case we have electrons moving, and one mm -hmm. case we have holes moving. Right. Um, and we have, there's a term for this. They're, okay. they're called charge carriers. Charge carriers. So either the electrons or, or the, uh, the holes are both yeah. considered charge carriers because they allow a charge to be carried through this material. Right. They both create kind of an imbalance. With the yeah. phosphorus creates an extra electrons, this creates holes that can be filled by other electrons, and then the holes can kind of keep moving. Yeah, and so in, in the case on the left, we call this, well, N-type material. N-type material. That makes sense. I'm guessing N for negative carrier. Right, right, because the, the electrons are negative. And then the, the boron-doped thing on the right we call uh, P-type. P-type. Makes sense. And these are the, the two types of, of silicon that we use in semiconductors. Fascinating. I think I can already see where this could go.